I was working late that night. I didn't mind so much because traffic out of the city was still heavy. I put my mind to the paperwork that would wrap up my last case. It was an odd one. This Joe believed he was constantly being watched as he drove, as if he was always in the spotlight. After some investigation on my part, it turned out that the passenger door wasn't closed all the way and the dome light was staying on. It was an open and shut case. I was pretty well into my report when I heard the commotion outside. It looked like I was back in business. It would just be a matter of time. Well. Hello. You straight? I don't walk the crooked line, sister. What can I do for you? Mr. Strait, there's just been a traffic crash, and I don't believe it was any accident. No accident? You're sure you're not mistaken? Why, yes. I am mistaken. Miss Shirley taken. But how did you know my Never name? mind. Did anybody call for a black and white? I don't think so. All right, then. My boyfriend Johnny and I were nearly killed back there, and I think someone tried to do it on purpose. And you want me to find out who's trying to bump you off, right? Oh, look, miss. If I've seen it once, I've seen it a hundred times, and the way that I look at it is those are just the brakes. Someone tries to run us off the road, and you say it's just the brakes? What kind of a man are Easy, you? sister. I mean, they're the brakes. The brakes on the car would hit you. They're ABS. ABS? You mean analog brakes? Exactly. Johnny! Your boyfriend? Johnny, this is Mr. Strait. He's a private eye. You okay, kid? Yeah, I'm fine. No one was hurt. Lucky thing. Listen, were you being followed? Well, beside the guard downstairs, no one saw me come in here. Uh, no, I mean, was the car you were driving being followed? Oh, no. Thank goodness, sir. Who knows how big of a pileup we'd have had. Say, let me get this straight, straight. How did you know that the other car had ABS? Call it a hunch. And if I was a betting man, I'd say your car doesn't have ABS. Why don't we start at the beginning? Tell me what you both remember. Well, Johnny was driving, and we were talking and laughing, and then suddenly, a car swerved from the other lane right at us. It all happened so fast, all I could do was slam on the brake and turn the wheel. But it didn't do any good. No surprise there. Why would someone deliberately try to hit us? I've got a hunch that the other driver was in over his head, and your boyfriend hears a squealer. <gasps> now, just a minute, Mr. Strait. Johnny, a squealer? He wouldn't rat on anybody. I could see that I wasn't making myself clear, so I made arrangements for Miss Taken and her boyfriend to pay a visit to an old pal of mine. He'd set him straight. Surely. Yes? Huh? Oh, uh, nothing. Hi, Dan Strait sent us? He said we're supposed to meet up with, um, well, all he said was we're supposed to meet an old pal of his. Old pal of his? <laughs> you must be mistaken. Surely. Palamine's the name, Al Palamine. You're uh, Johnny? Uh, yes, that's right. <laughs> nice to meet you. I'd like you both to meet my associate, Jim Brakewell. Hi. Strait told us he'd like us to show you how ABS and regular braking perform differently. Jim and I will also show you some techniques that'll make the most of each system. So, what do you say we get down to business? Sounds good. We have two cars that are the same, except one of them has an anti-lock braking system, the other one doesn't. We'll take both cars and recreate an emergency much like the one you had. Whoa, wait, wait a minute. I'm not sure I want to go through that again. <laughs> Don't worry. We've taken away the danger. See those orange traffic cones? Think of them as the edges of the roadway. The more widely spaced cones in between are the dividing line between lanes. In this case, we're simulating a two-lane roadway with a single lane in each direction. Uh, like the road we were on. Exactly. The cones at the far end of the right lane represent a vehicle that stopped in your lane. Now, you see those three cones to the right of the lane? That'll be our designated braking point, so we can compare one car with the other. I'll be at the start point, 
while Jim waits for you close to the braking line. So, what do you say we take a ride in the car without ABS first? The one most like your own. Ready? Ready. Ready. Everybody strapped in? Okay, first you'll accelerate to 35 miles per hour. Then think of those three cones as the moment when you first realize that the car in front of you has stopped. That's when you'll hit the brakes to stop as quickly as you can. Jim will catch up to you at the other end. You just slammed into the car you were trying to avoid. Notice that you also reacted by turning the steering wheel sharply in an effort to miss the obstacle in front of you. But the car kept going straight. Well, lucky for you. What do you mean? I'll show you. We'll do it again, only this time using ABS. I want you to go through the same action again. You'll accelerate to 35 miles per hour, then hit the brakes hard at the three cones. Got it? Okay then, hit it. Would you mind using a different term? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Is that better? Much. Wow. Johnny drove right into the other lane. In other words, directly into oncoming traffic. If this had been real life, you and anyone in the other lane could have been killed. What could I have done differently? Well, regardless of what kind of braking system your vehicle has, never jerk the steering wheel in an effort to avoid the object in front of you. With proper braking, your vehicle will respond to extreme steering, and that can send you out of control into opposing traffic or stationary object. Now we'll head back to see Alan. We'll teach you some proper braking techniques. Okay, you've seen what can happen out there with improper braking. Boy, it sure did. Yeah. Now let's see what happens when it's done properly. With conventional brakes, to avoid skidding, apply threshold braking. In other words, squeeze as much pedal pressure as you can without locking the wheels up in a skid. To properly brake with ABS, step down firmly and don't take your foot off the pedal, even when you feel it vibrate or hear a thumping or clacking noise. That's normal. What you're experiencing is the anti-lock braking system pumping the brakes for you many times a second, much faster than you could, all while preventing the wheels from locking up in a skid. Speaking of pumping the brakes, never pump the pedal of an ABS-equipped vehicle. It can take even longer to stop. But with all that traction control, couldn't I actually steer around the hazard? Well, the truth is, with ABS, you do have more control over your vehicle than you do with conventional brakes. So to answer your question, Yes, it is often possible to steer carefully around obstacles while braking, but it takes practice and very quick decision-making to do it safely. In just a split second, you have to answer several critical questions. Is there enough room to get around the object safely? What if the vehicle or hazard makes a sudden move while you're steering around it? Do I have another escape route? Would it be safer to use all of the available traction for straight-line braking? Then once those questions are answered, there's still one more. Will I be able to steer calmly and gently around the object without panicking? The danger in combining steering with emergency braking comes when human nature steps in. When a driver panics and jerks the wheel sharply away from danger, often into even more danger. Many drivers who experience ABS brakes in action for the first time, surprised by the pulsation of the pedal, react by lifting their foot. That's about as effective as having no brakes at all. Imagine that combination of jerking the wheel and letting up off the brakes at highway speeds. Ouch. Well, is there any way to know what ABS brakes are like without actually getting into an emergency? Sure. Try it out on a large, empty parking lot. Try it when it's dry and when it's wet or snow-covered. Then try steering while you're braking. You might be surprised at what happens. And an emergency is no place to find out. Of course, the best way to avoid an emergency situation is to stay far enough behind the car in front of you to allow time to react. At least three or four seconds on dry pavement. On wet or snow-covered pavement, double your following distance by staying six to eight seconds behind the vehicle you're following. Look for potentially dangerous conditions before they become emergency situations. 
The thing is, today's emergency braking technology is great, but it's there only as a last resort when all other efforts to avoid an emergency fail. And then like any tool, you have to know how to use it properly. Boy, when it comes to this ABS braking stuff, you guys don't let up. Exactly. Huh? In fact, we have a little something to help you remember what we've shown you here today. Remember, when driving a car with ABS, don't jerk the wheel and don't let up. With my client sufficiently enlightened, they returned to my office to put all the pieces together. Hello, Mr. Strait. Please, sit down. Thank you. So when you said earlier that Johnny was a squealer, you meant that he had a tendency to lock up his brakes in a panic. That's right. When he saw the other car headed at him, he slammed on the brakes. Okay if your car is equipped with analog brakes, but his car isn't. So he locked him up breaking the adhesion between the rubber and the road. He lost any effective braking he might have had and his ability to steer out of the way. And the other guy that hit us, he had ABS. But things went awry. When he noticed that traffic was stopped ahead of him, probably as a result of not paying close enough attention or by following too closely, he reacted by slamming on his brakes, just like you did, Johnny. The difference here is that his car's analog braking system did exactly what it was supposed to do. It kept the tires from skidding and maximized braking, but he panicked and reverted to old habits. Like you, he jerked the wheel to swerve out of the way, not realizing that with ABS, his car was capable of doing exactly what he told it to do. When he turned the wheel, his car maintained steering ability, so it swerved violently into the direction he steered it. In this case, right into oncoming traffic, which was you. He's lucky he didn't get himself or someone else killed. Not everyone's so lucky. But aren't anti-lock brakes still safer than conventional brakes? They can be. But since more vehicles have been equipped with anti-lock brakes, some strange things have been happening. It's not that ABS doesn't work, it does. What's not working are old braking and steering habits. Drivers must realize that when they steer while braking in an emergency, while driving an ABS-equipped car, it'll go where they tell it to go. I'm beginning to see things a lot more clearly now. I thought you might. How can we ever repay you? Well, you can begin by making a sincere effort to break your old braking and steering habits and spread the word to your friends. The more people know about how to properly operate an ABS-equipped vehicle, the safer we'll all be. Well, surely we owe you something. Well, let's just say that I'm cutting you a break on this one. Uh. <laughs> okay, Mr. Strait, today I got chocolate, I got honey glazed, I got sugar, powdered sugar, powdered glazed maple, I got crawlers, 